Hi everybody and welcome to the news from the ANU Medical School from today, the 28th of August 2020. You would have seen the update on the travel restrictions. They stay in place for all of Victoria and Greater Sydney LGAs. However, uh, Queensland LGAs have been added as hotspots, which means those of you who have been in Sydney or in these Queensland areas uh, cannot go to clinical placements if you are students um, or come to face-to-face -face teaching on Canberra Hospital campus for two weeks after your return. Those of you who have been in contact with those, uh, you don't have to do anything except for monitor your health and if in doubt go and see your GP or get tested. Also from last week's news was an update on the leadership for the ANU Medical School. Professor Emma Jim Mitchell, who is the clinical director of the ACT COVID-19 response, is doing such a great job that she's staying in that role for a little while, um, while I remain as the acting director and Professor Kevin Saliba will remain the acting deputy director. I'll be away on leave for the next two weeks. Um, for those of you who've got any questions in relation to the Royal Clinical School, please email Professor Amanda Barnard. Anything related to research, please email Professor Chris Nolan. Anything in terms of education, uh, either the Associate Deans of the Phases or Associate Professor David Kramer, and everything else, please um, get in contact with Professor Kevin Saliba. Now, as we are planning for next year, we would like to know from the Phase 2 and Phase 1 students on what of our teaching um, worked really well and what we need to improve on. We had put out a questionnaire to the Phase 1 students on their teaching, which was available on Wattle. We do not have enough feedback, not enough numbers of you who have responded to that questionnaire. Um, we will extend the questionnaire for another week. Please, Year 1 and Year 2 students, fill out those questionnaires, because otherwise we will not have enough information um, for teaching for next year. For the Phase 2 students, the assessment briefings have started. Uh, please be patient. We will tell you um, how assessment will be done this year and we will also discuss some practice options with you. In terms of access to buildings, there is no access to either the Flory building or buildings 4 or 5 for the tutorial and clinical skills rooms after hours. The TEL team is not just having regular drop-in sessions which run every Tuesday from 1 to 2 via Zoom, but also a workshop on interactive Zoom. This is happening on Tuesday the 8th of September from 1 to 2 o'clock. In addition, there will be face-to-face -face teaching on the uh, Tuesday the 6th of October from 1 to 2, which is about shortcuts to video creation. And on some rather sad news uh, around staff, um, we have two staff members who will be leaving the medical school in the very near future. One of them is Kerry Hogan, she's the Indigenous Health and Engagement Coordinator. Kerry has been with us uh, since 2018 and has made a significant contribution to the Indigenous Health team and we're very sad to let her go. Ricardo Gallardo, who is Voice Love's Officer and IT Support Officer, has been with us for a long time as well. Um, Ricardo's contribution has been in supporting everybody who wanted to know anything about IT and his calm demeanour and his can-do attitude have really made a big difference to all our teaching but also just being around Ricardo. We're very sad to see those two valuable staff members go but we do wish them the best for the future and please stay in touch. The highlights on our website uh, this week um, are two students. One is Catherine Parker that I introduced previously. She's a PhD and MCHD student who has um, received the very prestigious John Frederick Adrian Sprint Prize for her PhD. And Lucy Kirk, who is working with Professor Imogen Mitchell, um, also a medical student, um, has been a research assistant writing rapid evidence reviews to inform policy and practice responses for Canberra Health Service to COVID-19. And congratulations are in order. Pro Rolf, our education delivery manager, had a baby boy, Harvey, who weighed a proud 4.2 kilos just a little while ago. And he is the third child to the family and little brother to Olivia and Alistair. I hear everything's going well at home. Congratulations, Pro, and please do pop in and show off Harvey. And as some of you may know, every year the Vice Chancellor gives out an award for teaching excellence in various categories. Professor Grun, the Dean of the College, has sent out an all-staff email. There's more on Twitter today. 
my congratulations go to the medical staff that have been awarded with um, those prizes. First of all, there's Associate Professor Dipti Talalika. She got an award for teaching excellence, but also the team of Associate Professor Christina Valtacocci, Associate Professor Alex Webb and Miss Eliza Crossing um, for their exquisite corpse program. We're very proud of you. Congratulations. Well done and well deserved. Now, as you know, ANU held their virtual open week last week and the students have made a video that's available on YouTube for incoming medical students um, outlining what it is like to study medicine at our school. And students being so IT savvy um, have also contributed to knowledge around the rural program. So it's the current rural stream students that also made videos of their notes and their experiences um, from the different areas. They're all available on YouTube and we'll put the links into the newsletter next week. And the shining star this week in the media, without any doubt, was Professor Chris Nolan. Uh, Chris is leading the Mother and Child Project, a research program around birth and pregnancy during the bushfire crisis. And he has been a media star this week um, on a variety of um, radio and TV channels. In addition, Associate Professor Louise Stone was in the conversation, Dr. Anagreta Hunter on ABC, Canberra, Associate Professor Sanjaya Senanayaki, Sky News, Mamma Mia, ABC News Breakfast, and Professor Peter Colignon on Sky News 7, The Age, 4BC Radio, The Herald Sun, The Morning Show, and ABC Radio Adelaide. All have been very busy this week. Usually at this time of the year, we're looking forward to the Med Review, which unfortunately won't be held live this year. But the medical students have made previous productions available on Facebook. And the last of these, the 2019 production on how to train your doctor, will run um, tomorrow, the 29th of August. The Posh Indigenous Health Network Key Thinkers Forum will be held on the 27th of October at 9.30. And the topic for this event is precision medicine. You should have also all received an invitation to the end of year faculty meeting, which will be held as a mix between Zoom and maybe face to face um, on the 10th of December, 5.30, and we will send out reminders on that. In conjunction with Open Week, last week a webinar, um, a collaborative effort between the social scientists and the medical school, was held on effective communication and how it can save lives. Those of you who were unable to zoom into that event um, can see the recording which we'll post in the newsletter. And yesterday also the Medical Deans of Australia and New Zealand had their annual conference. This was hosted by the ANU Medical School, unfortunately not live but via Zoom, and Professor Mitchell was leading the um, local organising committee. The topic for this uh, year's conference was Creativity Out of Calamity. The conference was opened by Auntie Matilda, uh, our Vice-Chancellor, um, Professor Schmidt, and the Dean of the College, uh, Professor Gruen. And the sessions were also not just attended by a whole range of medical educators, medical deans, um, professional colleges or health organisations, but also by medical students. And medical students contributed to the program greatly. Um, there was a, a talk given um, by Lucy Kirk, our Year 4 student um, that I had previously mentioned, but also Catherine Jungers, who is a graduate from last year and who was the MedSoc president, who's now an intern on a COVID ward in a hospital, told us on how a medical school can or cannot prepare you to be an intern. It was a fabulous program. I understand recordings have been made of some of the main sessions and when they're available, I will send them out for information and for you to learn what we have learned. So that was all for from me for this week. Um, thank you again for watching. Uh, please remember to look after yourself, keep your physical distance, look after your friends and your family and your loved ones. Um, and uh, if you feel unwell, please go see a GP or get tested. I hope you all have a great weekend and I'll see you in two weeks. Bye-bye.